you or someone you love needs help for an addiction, where do you turn? Foundations Recovery Network offers individualized treatment for the whole person. Our goal goes beyond short-term sobriety. We address substance abuse and co-occurring mental health issues together, providing a firm foundation for long-term recovery. The first step is often the hardest, but we're here with a free assessment, insurance information, and treatment options. Our confidential helpline is available 24-7, so call 877-714-1318 and discover the Foundation's Recovery Network difference today. Yo, what's up? This is Jacoby from Papa Roach. This is Ryan Lee. This is Rich Roll, and you're listening to Sober Guy Radio. Yo, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to humans for bringing us in. As usual, we got the new jam. A little water, water going down. What's up to Robbie and the humans? Thanks again. Thanks to you for supporting the show. Proud to bring you Sober Guy Radio from Northern California. We have the big homie Seth Manter in the home studio tonight. Seth, let's get weird tonight. What's up, man? How you doing? What's going on? It's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's always an honor. It's been a while, man. It's been too long, I think. It it's has. Been, uh, it has been a while. Seems like it's been like over a year, but I don't think it's been quite that long. But... Episode 100. I think 100 was the last time I was on. Really? Yeah. So this is uh, this is episode 141, so it's been... Yeah, it has been, man. That's uh, exactly 41 episodes ago. <laughs> Your math is better than mine. Let's, uh, let's start with May as Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, many of you out there listening may have heard uh, last week's show uh, with Jess and I where we shaved some mohawks and uh, we talked about supporting our friends over at the UROC Foundation uh, by, by helping to support the One Million Mohawks for Mental Health Campaign. Um, the stigma around mental health uh, still prevents countless people from getting the help they need. Uh, many of us, I know for me personally, I think for you too, Seth, when we talk to somebody, a lot of the times, um, just in general conversation, it'll come up and it always seems like somebody has a relative, a family member, uh, someone they love, a friend uh, who has either struggled with substance abuse or some kind of depression, anxiety. Uh, so what this campaign is about um, is uh, bringing some awareness and some attention to that. And uh, you can do that by taking the 1 million Mohawk challenge and you can shave a Mohawk in your head. Uh, you can paint one if you're bald, if you got the guess who, right? We call that the guess who, like the guess who guy. <laughs> um, it's always good stuff. Um, you can do it live on Facebook. <laughs> Are you picturing the guy? Yeah. Yeah. He's that gray sometimes. Uh, I think his name's Carl. Hey, Carl. Think, yeah. Something yeah. like that. Uh, but you can do it live on Facebook. On uh, You can take a photo, put it on Instagram. Make sure you use the hashtag 1 million Mohawks um, and help bring awareness to mental health in the month of may um you can go to one million uh, www.1millionmohawks.com and take the pledge to join the movement and you can also watch the video of jess shaving the mohawk into my cranium on that sober and look for more resources on there big uh, big thanks to you rock foundation helios recovery and of course anthony and his team over at rise together uh for helping to put together the one million mohawk challenge Definitely uh, honored and excited to support it. What about you, Seth? Would you be able to do a mohawk? I've only got about, I don't know, a quarter of my uh, head that hair grows on. I guess I could paint <laughs> one on, but uh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know that. Uh, you know, obviously, I support the cause and and whatnot. Um, but I, I don't know that I could rock the mohawk. Maybe we'll have to get you a like a like a fake one or something. You can wear Cash's helmet. He's got the mohawk helmet. Hell yeah, you can rock that. We got the Jess on on uh, on the production tonight, behind the camera, behind the audio tonight. What's up, Jess? Probably can't hear her on the audio, but she's back there somewhere. Back We're doing, there. yes, you are there. We're doing Facebook Live for those out there listening, and then uh, uh, for those who are watching on Facebook Live or who will watch the uh, recorded version of this. If you'd like to hear the audio version of Sober Guy Radio, you can go to thatsoberguy.com. You can go on iTunes, you can go on Stitcher Radio, all the major platforms, and you can find it there. And if you do go on iTunes, please you leave us a review because reviews are awesome. So one last thing in uh, support of mental health awareness, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. I thought it was cool to give this out. You never know when someone needs it. The number is 1-800-273-8255, available 24 hours a day. Always got those, uh, those resources there. 
So Seth, my friend, good to have you back. How's things been going with you, man? Things are good. <laughs> things are good. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, yeah. Yeah, things are good. I don't have a complaint in the world. Yeah. I do. But, sober. But yeah. That's the biggest thing. I'm sober today. So yeah, no, nah, things are good. Um, yeah. Have you been... Um, have you been getting the daily AA email? I always talk about that. The transitions daily. Um, something I use to start out my day is like a, a, a email. It comes right to me and I kind of do that as part of my, um, you know, part of my daily routine, I guess. Do you get that? Yeah. Transitions daily is part of my daily routine too. I actually read it at uh, about 415 <laughs> as the uh, truck is warming up in the driveway before I head off to... Uh, to the plant to the to the factory we go we, we're, we go with the factory now but yeah it's definitely um one of those tools that I, and i usually um if i have you know the opportunity i'll read it once or twice during the same day so yeah yeah transitions daily is man i'm so grateful for that yeah that's a good one if you want more info on how you can get that that email uh right to you go to daily and they'll hook you up there and you can get that Delivered right to your inbox. Okay, so enough with the shameless plugs and uh, the uh, introduction stuff. Let's get down to a little business, son. About to be on the new man tomorrow. What's up with that? You listen to the new man, right? Yeah, that's exciting, dude. I'm I'm proud for you. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know, Trip Trip Lanier has just got something about his voice that makes yeah. it makes him fun to listen to. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm uh, excited to hear that one with you and Trip. That should be some good stuff. Well, it's kind of it's kind of like that um, that full circle type of thing, and that's kind of one of the topics we are going to touch on tonight was the power of thought and how um, we can tell ourselves negative things, and a lot of the time that that can produce that reality for us. Like if I tell myself I'm a fucking idiot, chances are I'm gonna I'm gonna be an idiot or you know, I'm, I'm going to act in the way that I tell myself, or if I tell myself that, um, there's a lot of positive things going on, I'm doing some, um, you know, some things in my life that have value to me and, and hold true, then my life may shift in that direction too. Um, with the new man, uh, that was kind of, um, a thing where three and a half years ago, I had the opportunity to find the new man, like as my first podcast, even before we started sober guy radio. And I think I told you this before. Um, and I actually had this like thought, this, this, this quick vision of I'm going to be on that show one day and be able to talk to other people about recovery and about, um, you know, um, sobriety, addiction, whatever the cases share a little bit of my story. Um, and so tomorrow it's happening. I don't know when to go live, but we'll post it up and, um, you know, we can check it out then. But, um, I know we kind of spoke a little bit about the power of thought before we got started tonight, and you had mentioned that's something that's real important to you, and it's it's something that you use in your daily life too. Like, how does the power of thought uh, affect you, or how do you use it, Seth? Look, I'm speechless right now. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you know the power <laughs> the power of thought for me is huge, right? So it's kind of um, I get to play out my um, my thoughts on a daily basis. I get to set up my day when I wake up in the morning, right? And it, typically, it's today's going to be a good day, right? Um, and just if like I, Ice Cube. Just like Ice Cube. Son? <laughs> say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say, it was a good day. Damn, I was just getting my uh, train ahead, of thought. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So, um it's the the power of thought has kind of um, molded my life and molded me into who I am today. Um, you know, I have the opportunity to tell myself that um, today's a, today's going to be a good day, you know, and I get to plan out how I'm going to accomplish it to be a good day. Um, yeah. What, what about though on the days that we wake up and we don't feel like it's going to be a good day? <laughs> Cause I know I have those like, son, like I would say for the most part, I'm genuinely pretty damn excited to get up every day and kind of see what's in store. Right. I know that like before when I used to be hungover or I would have a, a bad day, um, you know, and be in that kind of state of mind, I knew what was coming the next day. I was probably going to feel like dog shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But like today is, is different because I'm confident I'm going to wake up, you know, at least feeling good for the most part. Um, so 
I mean, I have that, I guess, in in a sense, like that um, that security, I guess, is what I'm what I'm looking for. But we do face shitty days, and so for me, that goes back to um, that's like the practice type of stuff, right? Like doing daily uh, daily rituals, daily routines, like staying in the moment in that. Like, what do you kind of do for that? So usually, I find that I dread a day on a day that I know that I have a lot of things that I need to accomplish. Or um, a yeah. lot of a lot of um, things that I think I knew need to accomplish. So I kind of try to set up a um, hourly goal list in my head. So yeah. my, the first thing that I'm going to do today is this, this, and this, and I will directly focus on that first thing. Um, and put everything else kind of not so much on the back burner because I need to know that I still need to take care of some other business other than that one thing. But I, I, I set, um, goals minute by minute, um, hour by hour. Yeah. And as yeah. I, as I, as the day goes on and I start accomplishing these small goals that I set for myself, um, I start feeling more confident in myself. And that day kind of turns into was once a shitty day, um, in the shower when I woke up yeah. is now a day to where, Hey, you know, I was able to make my coffee this morning. Awesome, cool. So now I get to leave the house on time. And it's just kind of, it's the snowball effect. It's a positive yeah. snowball effect. And before you know it, you're like, holy shit. You're laying in bed and you have accomplished everything that you set out on that day. Um, and then more. So, you know, that's that's kind of how I roll. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't go as planned, but... As long as I'm able to accomplish something in the day, um, sense of accomplishment for me kind of is is what keeps me going. Yeah, and I think uh, you you hit on a good point. It's about perspective too. So if I'm looking at the the big picture, because I'm I'm with you, man. I can feel I've actually been feeling this a bit lately, just overwhelmed with stuff. Right? There's so many components, and many of out there, if you're watching or if you're listening, um, I'm sure that a lot of you can relate to this. You have families, you have jobs, you have um, extracurricular things. If you have kids, God knows that is, you know, a, a whole nother ball game. Trying to juggle life and trying to juggle all this shit and then stay um, stay in some sort of, you know, um, positive frame of mind and, and in a relaxed state and kind of enjoy moment to moment is really, really tough. And if you don't have... Um, some tools to kind of help you go through that. Just like what you're saying, like perspective, like, Hey, I got to make my coffee today. You know what? I got a car to drive in. So we're, I mean, I know it sounds, it, it almost sounds um, silly even as I say it, but I know how important it is to focus on those kind of stuff, especially in a moment when um, it seems like the world might be crashing down. And obviously, you know, the level of world crashing down can be, a lot more severe for certain people in certain situations. So I don't want to take anything away from that. If we're talking, a, you know, a death or, um, you know, an illness, like something like that is, you know, a little bit different than some asshole cutting you off on the road and letting it ruin your day. Um, but I think when we, when we circle that as a big picture, um, the foundation of, of the tools that you can use is kind of the same. Would you kind of agree? Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, you definitely got to, uh, take into account what's important and what's not, you yeah. know, um, I mean, just to lighten things up for a minute, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> I got a couple, it. I got a couple cherry trees in my backyard. Right. And, the, and it, the, they're going crazy right now with fucking cherries. These cherries have got me so pissed off right now that I, <laughs> I'm finding that I'm like thinking about picking the cherries while I'm at work or when I'm with the family or whatever that I'm seeds, I'm, the, they the seed, the seed, oh, cherry. Yeah, those yeah. fuckers are good. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they are good. The dogs yeah. are eating them and, but you know, it's like, it goes back to that whole thought, and I, this is something that I told you, you know, in in your in the beginning of your uh, journey was yeah. that question, like, is it really that fucking important, yeah. you know? And if the answer is a is a no, um, a, a, a quick no to that, then you can move on, you know, and you could kind of I've I, I've been able to you know let myself go. The funny thing is with the cherry trees. So we got home from Pasadena, me and Mel, after driving in the car all day, we were sitting back there and we're like, you know what? Let's cut that fucking cherry tree down. <laughs> so we cut the fucking cherry tree down. It's eight o'clock at night, right? You're out there sawing away. We're out, there, so we're out there with the chainsaw. We look nice. over. You know what? 
we really need to catch the fucking peach tree chant down too. So here we are, fucking nine thirty at night, sweeping up cherries and fucking peaches out of the driveway after the the two trees that we cut down. So, I mean, I feel great now that I was able to do it, but it's it, it's things like that that um, you know kind of weigh on our mind, and we really need to ask ourselves like, is this really fucking important? It's yeah. it's, it's taking it, me away from the yeah. moment that I need to be president at a, any given time. Well, you you've I, I've came to you you know quite a few times with with some you know, things that are going on or whatever. And I remember you specifically telling me that a couple of times, like, bro, like step back for a second. Is it really that important? And then when you stop and think, you know, a lot of the time I'm like, you know, no, it's not, it's really not that, it's not that big of a deal. There's much uh, bigger things and uh, more important things that I could be putting my energy and focus into. But that, I guess going back to having community and homies and like a, a group setting, whether it's, you know, a church, if is it a 12 step group, is it just a couple of homies that you are, that you're tight with, that you can be real with, and they're going to be real with you. Um, that kind of shit is so important because it's just that minute just to get me out of my head, just enough to take a step back where if I don't do that, I may make a really bad decision that yeah, night that could absolutely. send me on a path you know, for months that ends up, you know, with all kinds of terrible shit happening, you know? Um, so you go ahead, go ahead. And, and it's not like that, that I don't, I'm not going to sit here on the soapbox and say that yeah. I don't have those days because I for do. Sure. Um, but what's different about me today and what's different from, from me six years ago is that I get to recognize that shit. Like I get to, I get to ask myself, is it really that fucking serious? Yeah. I have the power of thought. Now I get to have power over my thoughts and I get to overcome that shit. Um, silence. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I mean, it's, it, that's, that's the thing is that it's not, you know, it's not that I, that every day is fucking great. Right. Well, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty close, but, um, you well, it's, know, go, it's what you make it though. Right. Right. Is it great? Like I can wake up in the day and say, this day is going to be great. I can wake up and say, this day is going to suck ass right now. And I'm not looking forward to it. So whether or not, you know, when I, when I set that tone for the day, I know that almost, almost every time that's how the day will end up playing out. Like I will have a, a bad day if I tell myself that. So that kind of ties into the power of thought that we had originally started talking about. And then I want to tie this part of it in too. Um, you'd already mentioned this early on in recovery. Let's, you know, I've gotten a lot of emails lately and I've been talking to some new, some, some new folks and actually there's some old folks um, that, you know, I've known for a long time who are, um, you know, who are, who are starting to think about like, what's important in my life? Like, is it, you know, is it doing the same shit that I've done for so long? Or, you know, they're ready for change. They're ready to step out a little bit. And I'm not just talking about like alcohol and, and drugs and stuff too. I'm talking about just as a human being, as a man, as a dad, um, as a husband, as just a dude, just stepping out and, um, and, and getting outside of that box that we that we can tend to get boxed into. Um, and I'm not saying by any means that I am like Mr. Fucking step out. Like I've came a long way in three and a half years. I will definitely attest to that, but this shit is a daily grind. It's a daily thing that, um, I'm, I'm constantly learning and, and going through, um, you know, in, in order to, I guess, continue on that good path. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And and for me, what I do is I keep I keep it all simple. I keep it really fucking simple, right? Yeah. So um to continue on the path that I'm on now, um, you know, it's always for me it's about doing the next right thing. Yeah. Um and, and always trying my best. If I do those two things, um, I'm determined and I'm bound for success, right? Um I don't know. What was it? What was it? Well, I wanted I wanted to kind of roll it back because oh, that's that's what I was saying is that um, I've had I've had a lot of uh, people that are that are new in their maybe their first thirty days, even their first like few days. Yep. Um. So let let's just kind of encompass that into the first three months, right? Um. So and this goes for for people out there listening or watching. Um. If even if you have some time under your belt, this is really important too because it's important for us to take a look back on where we came from, um, and and kind of the the path and the journey that that we've been on because it helps keep us stay focused and stay humbled and and stay true to um, ourselves. At least I know it does for me. 
Um, so what I'm what I'm getting at here is let's I wanted to kind of take it back on this episode and you and I reminisce a little bit on what you can remember and what I can remember and what we can share with somebody out there who might be uh, trying to trying to find the same thing out like damn I, I kind of want to quit drinking I know you know I know it's been not it's definitely hasn't been affecting me in a positive light in yep. my life and yep. I'm ready I'm ready to kind of take a look at it and be honest with it so let's start with you if that's cool um, take us back a little bit and and share a little bit towards um, maybe like the the last you know couple of months and then into into those first couple of months of of um, of getting sober. Yeah, so I mean the last the last couple of months, like I won't I won't get too far into it, sure. but it was it, it's the typical alcoholic story, right? I was fucking drinking and drugging every goddamn day. I couldn't. Um, I was ruining relationships at home. I was ruining la- relationships at work. I couldn't. I didn't stick to my word. You know, it, it just a, yeah. it's just a typical. Um, you know, insane what about, behavior but, of an alcoholic. What about the intern? So those things that you just said, right? Um, you know, not not staying true to your word. Um, what were the what was the other two? I'm totally just shit on my brain right now. Ruining um, relationships. Ruining relationship. That's a huge one, right? Um, so let's just take those two: ruining relationships and not tr- staying true to your word. Talk about what that does to you on the inside. So those are the external things that we see that happen, but on the inside, what does that do? And what does that make you feel like when you're waking up like that every day? So, you know, it's, I was setting myself up for failure, right? So if I had made an appointment, um, created an expectation that I was going to go to an appointment and didn't go to that appointment, I I now had two things on my mind. One, the appointment that I was supposed to go to, um, and two, not going to that appointment. Right. Yeah. So it just, yeah. again, that snowball effect that I was talking about, it just kind of, I don't know, it got bigger and bigger in a negative light. Um, I don't, it's not, well, no, it, it can t- So, okay. So, so let me, I, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. I was yeah, trying no, to get, I was trying to, I was trying to get that <laughs> feeling though, but you know what I'm saying? Like that feeling of like when you wake up literally every day And I guess, I guess that's what I should have just said is waking up every day saying that you're going to make a different, you're going to make it some changes today and then reverting back to that same shit because you feel so shitty inside. Right. And just, just setting myself up for failure. Right. And feeling (laughs) like not that you're a bad person, not that we're bad people, but I mean, I kind of, we did some dumbass things like for sure. Yeah. Um, (coughs) but I mean, you know, it's, it's, it was the typical, um, this is a typical alcoholic story story for real. Like the biggest thing, and, and I didn't even really realize I was doing it until, you know, maybe a couple years ago was being, being a man of my word, doing the things yeah, that I said, that I said I was going to do. Um, and, and the effect that that had on other people, you know? Um, so what was it that finally made you, um, what was it that finally made you like the the kind of the light bulb went off and you were like, dude, like I have a problem. Like I, I probably need, um, I probably need to talk to someone about this. I might need to get some help. Like what, what was it for you? It was, I saw a relationship that I really cared about slipping away. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I had known probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years prior to that, that I had had a drinking problem and I, I was, so it was in your mind already. Yeah, I mean, fuck, I had already had one failed attempt at rehab, you know, yeah. um, back in 04. So it, I, I've known, and, and people were telling me, like, dude, you are not you are not a normal drinker. You well, I think if I mean? you like, pass out in the gutter, face down, yeah, you know, piss on your friend's couch, <laughs> you're, you're you had to buy him a new couch. I had to too, buy huh? him a new couch. Yeah, yeah I so bet that was you, pretty cheap. If you're, <laughs> yeah, pretty, if you're having to buy your friends, there. and you know what the funny thing is, like I had that couch uh, <laughs> probably up until six years ago, right? You like there was the, the oh, you had the pissed on couch. Yeah, there was a sentimental like attachment <laughs> to this couch, right? Like I, it's fucking crazy. I, I, I mean, I bought it. I, yeah, to, I, you did I pay for it. Yeah, so normal people they don't piss on their fucking friend's couch, right? But I did. Yeah, you know, so um, the, it was a it was a sign. Like I I knew everyone around me knew. Um, anyone you know that knows me could ask anyone else that knows me. They everyone knew that I you know was definitely an alcoholic. And looking back to it, I was you know I I was I was doomed 
I don't know, probably at birth, right? Just because I, I I now believe that it ran in my genes. But yeah. Anyways, um, so go so go back to um, you you said that it was a relationship that kind of woke you up and kind of that that light bulb moment went off. Even though you were just explaining that you you knew you had a problem, what was the next step in like taking some action and actually um, actually following through and and trying it again? Yeah, absolutely. So it was it was it was just being. Um, yeah, tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? Yeah. Like I, I had had enough of, I don't know that I had had enough drinking at that time, but I had, um, had enough of letting people down. I had had enough of letting myself down first and foremost. Um, I'd had enough of hurting people. I'd had enough yeah. of lying to people. Um, so I, I, I could honestly say, I don't know that I was ready to stop drinking, but I was ready to stop doing all that shit that was making me feel yeah. Um, you know, like a, a, a piece of shit. Um, was it, was it scary to, um, uh, to like, to know that you were going to have to give up that crutch, like to give up that. Cause I've always looked at alcohol, like, or I look at it now, like it's a tool, right? We use it as a tool to help deal with stuff or whatever, it, whatever it is. There's a bunch of different levels to that, I guess. But, um, I know it was a scary thing for me. Was it for you? Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, I, at that point in time in my life, actually probably, you know, even the 20 years leading up to that, like I had no idea how to deal with life. Yeah. The only way that I dealt with life was with drugs or alcohol. Yeah. And so, you know, there is some anxiety over losing um, the only thing that I knew how to, the only thing that I use that I know how to cope with. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I equate it to losing a best friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I knew that I could no longer do that anymore. So there was definitely some anxiety over that. Um, you know, and I, I think when I, when I finally realized that I, I, I was done, um, you know, I went over to my mother's house and I was on my knees crying. Like I need help. I need you to yeah. fucking help me. You know what How I mean? How did that feel? Um, looking back <laughs> at it now, I mean, it was, you know, uh, it was liberating, right? But yeah, yeah. Um, God, I can only imagine, you know, that it was. It, I probably felt like a piece of shit. Um, you, you know, it was one of those things that I, I thought I would never be there. Um, but, but looking back now, it, uh, Daddy, looking back now, I mean, it's it's one of those things that, um. Or if you're even thinking about it, like I wasn't, I'm not the only one that's ever been there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's, I think that's the biggest thing to remember is that there's people that go through this shit fucking every day. Yeah. So it's not important on how I felt. What What's more important was that I was able to, um, speak up and say like, I, I needed help. And you know, what's you know, what's funny is that, um, you know, there's, there's a stigma around mental, mental health and alcoholism and being a drug addict and being a piece of shit, you know, usually when you ask for help, people are like, Oh, thank God. Yeah. yeah. I never thought that you would ask for help. You know what I mean? And it's, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do, but the people that you feel like you're asking, the people that you ask help to are, are relieved and yeah. they are in my case, yeah, relieved you stopped pissing on their fucking couch. Yeah, and it, and it relieved <laughs> you know that the, you're you're ready, and yeah, I, and I was sure. at that point in time. So what, um, you know, once you're ready, like moving into that, what were those? Let's just say the first, um, like obviously you went to rehab. Well, I don't know that that might not be obvious to some people. You did go to rehab, um, like, dude, those first thirty. I I always kind of thought though the first thirty days. Like, don't get me wrong. Rehab was quite the experience and, um, you know, a lot of emotions going on. I remember crying and, and being, you know, ashamed and all that kind of shit that you feel like, why am I here? How did I get here? Um, at the same time, I feel like I don't want to say that was the easy part because it wasn't easy, but it was the easier part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like absolutely. getting home yeah. and then having to like figure out how to reconnect and stuff like it's, um, it's tough, but you know, in that journey, like it's been, you know, the most rewarding, liberating, like, you know, greatest thing that has happened in my life, at least, you know, um, what was it like for you? Like in the first 
you know, first 30 days, like what are some of the things that you did to, to stay, stay on point? So first and for- foremost, like my second stint in rehab at Azure Acres um, was an amazing experience for me. Um, it was the, it was the first 30 days at Azure. I mean, it, you know, I was in a sheltered environment. Um, obviously it was a little awkward going into rehab for maybe the first couple of days, but once yeah. I was there, I knew I was there. I was there for a reason. Yeah. I decided to be there. The hardest part for me came for that quote unquote 30 day period that lasted a whole year outside <laughs> of rehab. Yeah. Um, you know, because I, 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 <laughs> I had gone to rehab and had my whole mind scrubbed. I was kind of washed and um, put out kind of to drip dry out in the society, right? Yeah, Where yeah. it was up to me now to do the work. Um, so the first the first 30 days, like I said, it was a, for me, it was probably a year long period um, outside of rehab. Um, it was tough because I, I, I had set up a lot of things in my mind that I was going to do. Um, and you know, I'm here to say that I didn't do everything that I said I was going to do. And I kind of, I, I kind of felt like a failure. Yeah. Um, but after, after I realized that, you know, I couldn't do everything, um, that I set out to do in one day, you know, I, I had to get back to that progress, not perfection and, and really work on, um, you know, minimal goals, uh, for that whole first year for me. Um, well, it's know, like we, that immediate gratification type of thing. Like it doesn't, we, you know, I know I would get that with, with alcohol or weed or Coke or whatever, especially Coke, fucking immediate gratification right there. <laughs> but you get it and it's like, didn't, no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> um, fuck was I saying? Um, <laughs> Totally, totally Im- just brain shit. Oh yeah, yeah. We well, we want that. Like I would want that. You know, I want that. Um, and and when like when your brain starts to defrost a little bit, you don't have that. And right. it, there's a lot of patience involved, and there's a lot of like trying to kick back and like let things, um, you know, let things kind of settle and let things come to you in a sense. And so that's part of, uh, you know, and I've told this story a few times, but it's probably been a while since I told it. So I think it's relevant right now. Um, and you and I had the same counselor in Azure, James, James Cantor. If he ever hears this, James, I love you. Save my life, homie. Um, you can't fucking do this anymore. (laughs) Dude, ponytail. What is it? Let's describe. What do you got? Ponytail. Yeah. Well, balding on the top ponytail. Uh, he would always rock in with the fedora. My favorite was was the, uh, Hawaiian shirt, but with the flannel <laughs> over the Hawaiian shirt. So like he was the he yeah. was the island he was the mountain man of the islands or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, James was James. He had was his own awesome. style. He he definitely had his yeah. own style. And he kind of he had like a New York kind of like Jersey accent yeah. somewhat. But yeah, I don't know that he had, had I don't know where that came from because I'm not and yeah, I, he's I'm from probably, the Bay Area. Yeah. So is yeah James was was uh, was the shit. Well, for he sure. he would tell the story and you probably remember this story too because it's about patience and we just you know we just mentioned about how it's tough to kind of hold on to that. And this is a story that I've never forgotten. And I've, I've used it in so many spots where I've started to get agitated or irritated and I start to act, you know, like my, I'll go back to those old thoughts, those old fe- old feelings um, and wanting to kind of, you know, get pissed off or whatever. And he, he, he would tell this story about how he was in a meeting and sometimes in meetings, there, there will be uh, people who go there just to get their chip, right? Just to get their, their three month chip or their six month chip or their year chip or whatever it is. Right. And so every, he would say everyone in the meeting knew that this dude up there was full of shit. Everything he was saying was, was bullshit. He was up there just to get his chip and it, you know, and, and everyone's kind of doing the thing and, and James was starting to get pissed off. And he said, uh, he goes, you know, and he was he was talking about this and that, and I'm getting pissed off and more pissed off. And I stood up and I was about to walk the fuck out of that meeting, and my sponsor grabbed me, and he uh, sat my ass down and he said, "You're gonna sit here and you're gonna practice your fucking patience right now." And that has always stuck with me because it's I think it's so um, I think it's so relevant in in that like dude you got to sit down and we might not always enjoy what's going on in the circumstances. But I can't control that circumstance a lot, mo- you know, almost all the time. But I can control how I respond to it, right? The classic thing. 
Um, and so those are the types of things that, that I can work on internally in order to have a decent day. You know what I'm saying? Instead of blaming it on the guy who's up there, you know, you know, I could leave that, you know, you could leave that a meeting like that and then have a shitty day and say, Oh man, yeah, man, what a what a dick. He was up there talking about this and that. He was so full of shit. He may have done that anyways, you know what yeah, I mean? But yeah. at least you have a little bit of peace of mind and you're you're consistently, you know, working on that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think I think another Go ahead. Sorry. I think another something that's that's really important for someone in their first thirty days or for like me, you're you're 30 days last a year is, is being comfortable with self. Right. So, yeah. um, I know that for me, like I had a really hard time after I had left Azure. Um, and after, you know, I had realized that alcohol could no longer, um, help me with self that I had a really hard time <clears throat> being comfortable, um, with just being yeah. right. And being, um, sober, Really, and yeah. I, I know that um, I know that feeling, and I'm sure that you know. Uh, there's, I, I know that that feeling is not. Um, it's not something that I on, only I went through, right? So I think that it's yeah. something that you know it's important to get that out there that that uncomfortable with self is going to occur, um, and you need to have patience that that will subside, right? And I think I, I always love your your self right you, you how, how you wanted to change who you were after you left you the left cowboy the, story. the cowboy story that's one of my <clears throat> one of my most yeah. favorite things is that you don't have to be anyone different than yourself yeah right um, but you got to find yourself first you got, and that's but, the thing yeah let's uh let's let's take a quick question real quick um chris carroll the big homie man dude love you chris carroll um i'm stoked you're on uh, on the facebook live right now thanks for um contributing some thoughts and some question um, first comment, uh, Chris said, man, it takes guts to ask for help, respect. So thank you on that, man. And, um, also ask a question. I think this is a great question because a lot of people ask this. Um, he says, do you live in some type of fear or carry any anxiety in the back of your mind that one day you may relapse or the possibility of one day giving in, um, just because as an addict, it's, it's really easy uh, to slip. And I think that's a great question because, Dude, that thought, absolutely, man. Like, um, I still have that thought of if I suffer some sort of traumatic experience, and you and I have talked about this before. Yep. yep. Someone passing away, some sort of um, illness, like something that is like a you know a really huge deal in life. That there is that thought in the back of my mind that I may revert back to that. I don't know if that's I don't know what that is, but it's it's hard for me to admit that because I'd like to sit up here and say like, oh no, man, I got it all together and. No, fuck that. I haven't drank in like three and a half years and I'm good with that. But that's really not the case. Contrary to that, the important thing is, is like for me going back to um, going back to what kind of we were talking about in the beginning is having that community and having um, that solid foundation and knowing that I have resources. I have people to hold me accountable. I have um, I have good, good, positive people and things that I can reach out to when, because it's not a matter of, of if it's a matter of when something like that happens, we're yeah. all going to fucking die one day. I'm yeah. Sorry to say it. You know, the people we love, I don't want to get too, too weird, but I said, let's get weird in the beginning, but um, <laughs> we're all going to die. You know what I mean? And, and people close up, we're going to suffer things in life that are very difficult to deal with. And so do I want to go down the road of numbing myself um, to cope with that? Or do I want to have positive, healthy tools um, that I'm picking up along the way, you know, I, I, I would love to, uh, to go down that path instead of going, going down the other path. And, um, you know, I mean, what's your, what's your take on it? Yeah. Hey, Chris, that's a great question. That's actually one I love of my most, too, that's one way, of my Chris. most favorite, um, questions is the, is the fear. Are you scared of relapsing? And I will say this, um, you know, in my, in my first, you know, couple years, yeah, it was, it was a huge fear of mine. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, 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 it made me realize that the world does not fucking care that Seth's sober. Yeah. Um, period. <laughs> right. But so nowadays that fear is actually one of my strengths and it's actually one of my tools that, um, keeps me sober today. Right. Yeah. So if I, I know that if I were to have that one drink, I would be 
fucking hung over the next day because it wouldn't be the one drink. I would not, I already know in my mind that if I had one sip of beer, I would get fucking hammered. Yeah. So, um, could you imagine? <laughs> no, because, <laughs> I don't want to because either, I've, but, I've gone a man. long, a long time of, um, rebuilding relationships with the people that I love. Yeah. Um, it's took me a long time to be a man of my word and it's been a long time since I've had a fucking hangover. Yeah. And to me, you know, <clears throat> the way that I say sober, I think is is is, is kind of unorthodox, but it, it works for me. Yeah. Um, I am scared to death of a fucking hangover, and the thought of having a hangover will keep me sober today. So I have turned actually turned that um, fear of of relapse into kind of a tool. You know, like yeah. I know I know where I will go with a relapse. Yeah. Um. And and. I mean, I guess yeah, I'm I'm scared to shit of it, but it's it's one of the things that keeps me sober today, I, and I hope that uh, tomorrow I feel the same way. Yeah, so I guess that's a good point. The fear of it is is because I think you can use fear as as a positive attribute too if you know how to if you know how to use it, right? Yep. Uh, I'm not saying I'm some perfectionist at it because I feel fear often. I felt it today, as a matter of fact, in some other shit I'm dealing with. Um, but if you use it as a tool in a positive manner in order to keep like myself in check, then I can, I can really, um, I can use that to my advantage, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Joey, uh, Joey Ramos said, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of you both. Um, so proud of both of you guys keep up the good job and keep spreading your love and knowledge to the world. Thanks, Joey, man. I haven't seen, seen Joey in a long time, but yeah, so, right on Joey. Yeah. Thanks dude. Um, and thanks again, Chris, Chris Carroll for the, uh, for the question, dude, that's a good one. Um, let me uh let me revert back to this real quick. Um, I wanted to uh, you want to read a, 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 a email and go over an email or what? Do, what are you thinking, Seth? We yeah, that we sounds good. I can't I can't see that. So you just go ahead and read it off, and I'll I'll get on it. Um, I didn't. You know, let, let me. We didn't finish the. I feel like I'm jumping around a little bit. We didn't finish um just the kind of being new, yeah, new in sobriety yeah. real quick. Yeah. So. Yeah. Let's do the email in, in, in just a couple of minutes and then let's kind of wrap that part of it up and then we'll do the email and, and we'll wrap this thing up too. Um, shots. I, I've already told the cowboy story, dude. I don't want to do that. What, what was, um, let, let's give, let's give people, people watching or listening a takeaway. Um, if you're out there or you have somebody out there that is struggling, maybe it's not yourself. Maybe it is. Maybe it's someone that you love and you care about. Um, and you want to see them, um, you know, maybe get some help. Um, what, what was it for you that, um, that, that kind of, um, helped kick, kick you in gear and stay on, stay on the right track? Is it meetings? Is it, um, getting a sponsor? Is it, um, you know, creating community? Like what, you know, what is it? So <clears throat> I definitely think that the, you do need to have some sort of support group, whether it be you, um, you use AA, you use NA, um, you use celebrate recovery, you use, uh, a fucking group of friends in your in your grandmother's backyard. Whatever it is, I truly believe that you need to have a support group in place. Yeah. Um. For me, you know, a lot of my recovery today is the same exact uh, recovery that I was that I put in place in my first thirty days. Right. Yeah. I go back to keeping it simple. Um, I think it's very important that you set goals for yourself in your first thirty days. Right. Whether it be yeah. minimal goals. Um, say you're, you have just come home from rehab and you don't know what the fuck to do. So you wake up, you set a goal for yourself. What I did, I'm going to go for a walk today. Yeah. When I went for that walk and accomplished that goal, um, I felt great. So that's something that I use is, is set, set goals that are small um, and obtainable and you will start yeah. to build self-confidence. And I think that that's the biggest thing. Um, I truly believe that I'm an alcoholic because I don't know how to deal with self. Right. Yeah. That's and cool. I, that's and, cool. and my, my confidence in myself is super low. So once I start to build that confidence up, um, I'm able to deal with self and I, over time, I don't need the, the alcohol to cope. So I think that if you could start building your self-confidence up, by accomplishing uh, small goals, um, you know, the, I know that that was one of the biggest things that helped for me. And then obviously, you know, having a support group. Yeah. Um, you, it, it's truly, um, you know, recovery is truly a, a it's a, I don't know how to say this. It's a, you know, it's a, it's, 
it's your it's it's your own path but you definitely need um the foundation and people around yeah. you in order to to accomplish that path so whatever works for you um you know that's work work if it what what is it if it if you work it if it, if you if work it, it, let me work it. I put my game down, flip it in reverse. It. I don't know what the, I know what the fuck you were trying to say, but yeah. If it, I mean, if it's working, keep doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean. Like I said, I still do uh, stuff today um, that I was doing in my first, you know, two three days of sobriety. So, <laughs> well, I like no. That's that's a great thing too because I think there's a misconception that you have to do it one certain way, and if right. you don't it's not going to work for you. And that's not the case. Um, you're and I, you know, you're and I recovery is we have a lot of similarities. We do do a lot of the same things. We also do a lot of things differently. And there's a lot of people who have very, uh, very conventional styles of doing it, you know, and there's a lot of people who have unconventional styles and, and it's important to, uh, to kind of find that, like, what was that? I, I, I was so hoping we could reference this and I just remembered what it is. And, um, so we talked about the new man, right. And, we, we both had listened to um, an episode on The New Man with uh, Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. Yep. And he talks about, um, you know, about making a recipe, right? If you, if you never follow the directions to the recipe, you're never going to make something. It's not, it's gonna, it's not going to taste good. It's not going to come out great, right? But once you follow the, like you said, setting the foundation, right? So I follow the directions. I make the, I make the meal or the whatever baking, cooking it is, right? Once I make it a couple times, I start to get a little better at it. I, you know, I start to get a little better, a little better, a little better. And then soon enough, I start adding my own little ingredients. I start taking my own little ingredients out. I start changing the temperature time, I think he says. And before you know it, I don't even have to look at that recipe so much because I've created my own in my mind. But the important thing was that I set the foundation for that. Yep. And so if we take that kind of same concept and apply it to, you know, our recovery and and doing things how um, you know, it's important to listen though, too. So I'm not saying like, go out there. Like, I can't go out and, and especially in the beginning and just try to make up my own fucking thing. It doesn't right. work like that. Right. Um, but along the way over time, you know, you're building those steps, you're building those steps. Um, you can, you can kind of create your, your own, um, your own, your own destiny. Yeah. And I think, I mean, uh, this, this may sound really fucking stupid, but I mean, it's, 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 it's <laughs> can I tell you if it does? <laughs> yes, hey, Seth, do, this sounds really do. fucking it's, stupid, it's, bro. It's, it, it's very important to stay open to new spices too to add to that recipe right like yeah, if if you if you've been doing something for six seven eight years and then in your ninth year you realize ah you know what this this recovery stuff it's really boring um you know that that's where it's 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 important to to keep yourself um fresh and new and open to new ideas and new ways yeah so let me let me share real quick um what's kind of worked for me in the beginning um, to add on to Seth's and then we'll do this email and then we'll wrap this thing up. Um, I think this is a, another important component uh, is finding something that you're passionate about and finding something that you deeply care about, because we all know I cared a lot about drinking and yep. getting high for a long time. Um, and eventually it became a, a, a way of daily life for me just to function. Yeah. And <clears throat> when you suddenly stop doing that, it can be hard to find you know, to find things that you enjoy to do again. Like for me, I had a hard time, especially in the first year, even picking up a guitar because it, you know, I related it to getting high, you know, or, or, or partying while I was doing it. So it was difficult for me to find that same uh, enjoyment out of it at first. And so in that, I kind of had to create this, this new, this new thing. And for me, it was, it was the podcast. Now, there was two things. It was podcast and it was exercise. Um, so I found passion in both of those, especially the podcast. Now I'm not saying everybody, you need to run out and start a podcast or learn to play the guitar or whatever it is. Everyone's thing is going to be different. But what I am saying is if you can find something that you really enjoy to do, you know, go after it full force, whatever time you have, um, you know, and, and, and start doing that along with working, you know, a, a, re a recovery program and trying to stay on track with that. Because I know for me, um, you know, putting the the time and the effort and, um, you know, having some goals set, like you mentioned goals earlier, that's a huge thing. And it, and it helped keep me on track and not turning back to, um, my old ways because I felt like I had something to actually live for, 
and I felt excited about something and I felt like like I didn't I, I didn't want to jeopardize what I was building by going back to that stuff because especially in the first year there was a lot of times when you know those thoughts are really relevant like you can just go get fucked up right now nobody would know you know no one's gonna know who you know but the important thing is I know and if I know just like you said one drink dude it's fucking over yeah. like I'm 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 headed to on the fast track to to hell pretty much um yeah and I, I think it's important to say too that it, the the your new um hobby for lack of a better term it doesn't hobby. it doesn't have to be a fucking hobby lobby <laughs> it doesn't have to be some like crazy fucking extreme thing right yeah. like starting a podcast yeah, or starting a tv show or or you know taking up fucking underwater basket weaving it doesn't have to be that right like so for me my biggest um thing was like i still wanted to have fun in recovery yeah. um like i had fun when i was drinking and i will tell you to this day that i am the most drunk fucking sober guy at the party <laughs> that you will ever meet right like you're the loudest people motherfucker look at me like god damn is this fool fucked up and it, you know <laughs> sometimes i i will play that part right but i wanted to still do the things to a certain extent uh, that yeah. I did when I was drinking, right? Yeah, sure. I still wanted to be passionate about baseball. I wanted to fucking camp. I wanted to go to concerts, right? And the biggest thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to turn from a recluse, someone that wasn't able to um, converse with a stranger unless I was drunk. This was my biggest goal. Now, I could fucking talk to anybody. I talked to the little old man in the grocery line. I talked to the, uh, the girl with fucking pink hair at the library. You know what I mean? Like, it's stuff that you could do on a daily basis to do the things that you want to do. Yeah. Right. That keep yeah. you, um, fresh and I don't know, excited about being sober. Yeah. Right. Cause it doesn't have to be, Oh, you know, fuck I'm sober. Like my life is over. It's my life just started once I got sober. Dude, for sure. I feel like that too, man. I feel like, I feel like once the, the fog cleared and stuff, yeah, I felt literally like I had this new life and dude, fucking i i honestly do and so you know we both do yeah. we yep. both are doing things that are just like i'm doing shit right now that i never ever would have ever been able to do had i kept going down the path i was on because that was going nowhere fast and um it really is like getting a, a second a second or third yeah you know fourth fifth sixth Absolutely. seventh eighth ninth tenth for some of us but um let's uh let's do this email real quick um and uh and and we'll kind of elaborate on it. And Jess, we're going to invite you to uh to conversate on this one from from the audience back there if you would like, okay? So feel free because uh this our own is, little studio audience. Our, that's right. Our own little studio audience back there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, Fucking damn, I need clap. I need some uh You do need the studio I clap. <laughs> I, I got I got one for you, Seth. Frank Rizzo. Yeah. We just played the, uh, uh, the Frank Rizzo. Dude, but if we would have just recorded our shit, bro. I know. I know. I think one day we need to God. do we need to do a, a a prank call episode, Seth and I. Uh we used to we kick back in like that. the sixth, seventh, eighth grade when jerk I don't know if any of you remember the jerky boys, right? Um and I, I'm very sorry about that, so I'm very fucking apologetic. <laughs> and this one? My ass looks like an old fucking barrel. <laughs> Frank Rizzo. Frank Rizzo. But uh Jerky Boys Open were your great. Fucking ears, jackass. <laughs> and and we used we used to do the 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 prank calls and have a have a good time doing it. We need to bring that back uh, and yeah, uh and maybe know. do maybe do a, a prank call on the show. No, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know if it'd be as funny. You're right, dude. I'm I'm fucking old, man. Yeah, I'm trying I'm prank trying to I'm trying to be fun. Hey, it might be fun, you know. Hey, you never know. Probably yeah, why not? not? Fuck it. All right. Well, you want to do it right now? I'm just nah, kidding. Let's do this I'm, email. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so, and and what I wanted to say real quick, this email is great because, and this is why I think it's so important to have Jess on the show. Uh, we've had Mel on the show a couple times too. Is getting the perspective from the spouse or the significant other or the loved one who's going through the shit, dealing with the alcoholic or. Um, you know, the person who is making shitty choices that is basically ruining theirs and everyone else's life around them. Uh, so this email related to that, it says, my husband has been in and out of recovery for almost five years. He has addictions to alcohol, marijuana, and gambling. He first went into AA in 2012 and was sober for four months before relapsing. He completed three months at treatment, had a year of sobriety before relapsing. 
Since that time has relapsed repeatedly, repeatedly, binge drinking and reverting, reverting to um, chronically using marijuana again. He's maintained chronically using marijuana. This go hand in hand. Um, he has maintained his job through this, but it has taken a toll on his mental and spiritual health. And of course, our family. We have three kids together, ages five, eight, and one. Always fucking tough to hear that. Um, he has court conditions to not communicate with me. Come to the house this past week, relapsed again. Ended up driving four hours to our town, calling to arrange to see our kids. Uh, basically, a, a, a real big mess. And he proceeded to come when he wasn't supposed to. And the cops were called. He was rearrested, and he's likely going to jail now. Hmm. So basically, you know, her dilemma is um, she says she doesn't believe in jail time. Uh, or is that what he needs? She believes in, in rehabilitation and, and trying to uh, advocate for her husband, and she just doesn't know what to do. Thanks, Sarah. So, Sarah, thanks for write, for writing in. Um, I think I think she also did a voicemail on the website, which was cool, too. Uh, she's looking for answers. I emailed her back today, but I thought it might be cool for us to, uh, to maybe have uh, maybe you and Jess's take on this. This is a tough situation, and yeah. it brought me back to, to my, my childhood. Um, it's very similar. Very similar to, I'm sure, what a lot of us grew up in. Unhealthy household. Um, you know, it's not that mom and dad don't love us and stuff, but it's just there's there's just some some bad ways of communicating and some shitty decisions being made. Uh, what's your thoughts, Seth? So, Sarah, thanks for the email, and um, you know, I, I, I'm just going to apologize in advance if I if I offend. It's definitely not my my intention. Um, first and foremost, I would say that. Um, your husband has got to decide to get clean and sober, right? You cannot, your children cannot, his parents cannot, um, your parents cannot make that choice for him. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a personal choice. Um, and he's sick. He's, it sounds like he's very sick. And I, you know, I, I could relate to, uh, maybe some of the things that he's going through. Um, with that being said, he, he hasn't reached his bottom yet. And, and I don't mean to sound nonchalantly about that, um, but um, that uh, that's kind of what it sounds like. What's more important, um, Sarah, is that you, um, I would recommend you taking care of yourself, right? I, it sounds like that you're putting a lot of your, your energy and effort into saving him. Um, but believe it or not, you... Um, you matter too, and you have emotions, and you really you, you need to take care of yourself. And maybe, um, I would I would seek help. Um, you know, a support group with uh, women that are going through the exact same thing. Because believe it or not, um, you're not the only one, yeah. right? So I think it's I think it's important um, for for you to take care of yourself, and then you know ultimately your children, right? Um, because they are you know innocent beings that that at this juncture in their life need to be protected. Um, and you know, I, I would just, you know, uh, hope, hope that you, that you seek help in that. And, and it's not Sarah, the biggest thing to remember is it's not your fault, right? Like you didn't, you didn't want this for, um, you, you didn't want this for your children and you didn't, you definitely didn't want this for your husband. But, um, with that being said, it's not your fault. You know, it's not, there's nothing that you could do to, to force him, um, into, into rehab. And I, and I will say, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a big, a big fan of the jail time either. Um, but you know, usually, usually you don't go to jail if you're not doing something wrong. Um, and, and I truly believe that. Um, and, and maybe, you know, this is a time that he may, he may, you know, start to, the start to realize that maybe he does need to get some help and, and really stick to a program. So, um, you know, with that being said, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely pray for you and I'm pray for your children yeah. and, um, you know, just, just, just focus on them, focus on you. Um, there's not, there's not much you could do for your, for your husband at this point. And, and I'm, and I, again, like I said, I, I'm not saying give up, um, or any of that, but, um, I, I would, I would really, I'm going to say advise, but that's probably the wrong word. I would advise that you take care of yourself. Yeah, I would agree. Jess, anything you want to add nope, from, from back there in the audience? My Woo! lovely lady, <laughs> just some claps. Yeah, word. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I love it too. I don't have, I don't I actually don't have much to add. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's huge because you're not going to change anybody. Right. And so, um, you know, just going back to what, uh, you know, we kind of alluded to a little, a little bit, um, in it, what uh, Trip Lanier and Don Miguel Ruiz yeah. Jr. said was that um, you can't control anything outside of your fingertips, right? You can't control his emotions. You can't control his being. You can't control his spirit. Just do you. Do you, boo boo. Yep. Do you. Yep, for sure. Well, Seth, it's been great to have you back. That's for damn sure. One of my best homies, um, one of the uh, leading men to help me down the path to uh to get sober so you know i always uh have to thank you for that um i don't know man i don't i don't know if and that's why it's so important to continue for all of us to continue um spreading the word and working with other people and and trying to be there for uh, other people as friends and family um and just being a positive light because i don't know that had you not gotten sober and given me a little hope to you know, for me to say like, hey, fuck, dude, if Seth can do it, I can fucking do it too, because I really did think that, um, you know, and, and the fact that you had been through there. So I, I knew that I had, you know, a close homie uh, to lean on and, and to be there. So, um, you know, I just, I thank you for that. It's always great to have you on, man. I'm so glad you're part of the show and, and part of Jess and I's uh, lives and stuff. And thank you, man. You're just an awesome friend, buddy. Love you. Yeah, abs absolutely. And, you, you know, you got to remember, man, like he, you know, we're friends, uh, we're family. We've known each other for about a, a couple of years. Um, but you, give yourself credit too, man. Like you and Jess are both putting in, um, work on yourselves. Right. And that's, that's huge, you know, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just here. Right. And you wouldn't be where you're at today, Jess, you wouldn't be where you're at today without, um, the work that you guys are putting in. So keep up, keep up the good work. I come from the gutter. Yep. So, <laughs> No, you don't, bro. I'm you come kidding. from fucking s suburbia. <laughs> That's why it's funny, dude. Vacaville, son. Yeah. No, I played a scar. Yeah, for those who can't hear on the on the live, I played a Scarface sample that says, "I come from the gutter." Let's play it again. I come from the gutter. <laughs> love no, it yeah well dude good to have you again jess thanks for uh, helping us out today if for more information go to that sober guy.com there's resources there all kinds of good stuff love you guys peace love respect keep your blood clean frank rizzo <laughs> my ass looks like an old fucking barrel